Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here again in the naughty corner with another tutorial for you. And if you've been following along with the channel then you'll know I'm working on the War Games D-Day board for my mate Martin up in Southport. Yeah, and as part of that process, yeah, I'm going to be cladding it up with uh, Woodland Scenics cast rock faces. Now I know for a fact that the moment I start doing that, yeah, people are going to be going, how do you do that? Yeah, so, you know, let's do a tutorial on it. So as you can see, I am mid-casting at the minute and I'm using, like I say, Wooden Scenics rock casting moulds. Yeah, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the proper way and a quick and dirty way, yeah, for you. Yeah, the proper way and then the way I do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, feel free to critique me at the end, guys. But in the meantime, come on over to the bench and we'll get cracked on. Okay guys, yeah, I'm in the process of casting up here and you can see all the rock faces I've already worked on for the D-Day board. Now, if I pull one of these up, these are from the Woodland Scenic Rocks Moulds. They are brilliant, okay? Yeah, and we're basically casting up a load of different of these so we can clad the, the cliffs, etc. And give it the most realistic rock faces we can for our wargaming hills. Yeah, so we've got two moulds here. Now, obviously, you can tell they're different. Yeah, this one has been washed and dipped into essentially soapy water. Yeah, uh, the the it's basically because the water's got a bit of dish detergent in it, very liquid. Yeah, it reduces the water tension, and makes it f like a flow aid, and it makes sure that it goes absolutely everywhere. Yeah, and so it completely removes the air bubbles because when we pour our plaster into this, what will happen is, because the water's already into where air, all the air bubbles would normally go, the plaster will just flow into it and we don't get that situation where you get trapped air bubbles. Now with this dry mould, yeah, without the flow in, we will get air bubbles in, but I'll show you some tips to deal with those if you go for them. So just in case you try this technique and you do end up with them. Yeah, so this is the pro way, this is the, the quick and dirty way. Right, I've got a big jug. Yeah, you've got to have your own separate jug, and in there is 125 millilitres of cold tap water. Now, what I've got here is 250 millilitres in volume, yeah, of casting powder. Now, I prefer Herculite 2, okay? It's mixed at a ratio of 2 to 1 in favour of powder to water, yeah? It's got a work time of about 2-3 minutes. Yeah, and a cure time of about 12-15 about minutes to demoulding, then it's dry for the next day completely. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this up, and I'm going to mix it up here. Yeah, so I'm going to tap this in, and give it a stir. I'm making a best. Now, these moulds I've got, they don't sit properly. So what I've done is, very quickly, I've just got some odd castings and some bits, and just propped up the edges. Yeah, I hate... See, this is the problem when you watch clip, when you're talking and doing. Yeah, you don't always get the best results. Yeah, so, my moulds are propped up. Yeah, we've got our mix. Yeah, next job is to pour it in. Yeah, so, let's go for dirty mould first. Yeah, bit in there. That's because I don't know if I'm going to have enough to do all of these. In fact, I'm probably not. I'm going to have to mix up another batch, I reckon. Right, let's just do one. Let's do one. Let's fill that in. That's it. In you go. Come on. Hey, make a mess. There we are. That's enough. I normally mix more of this up, to be truthful, and do a load of, of moulds. But it's a bit easier in this situation just to do your shoot a, a few and sort of show you what I'm doing. Right, straight off. Yeah, give him a little bit of a wiggle. Yeah, help it all flow round. Yeah, you'll see how I've got them propped up. Okay, and with this one, you can see it's a lot more watery. That's because as the powder has dropped in, okay, in fact, that's going to split right there. That's not even nowhere near deep enough. Have we got any more we can shove in there? Have a look. See if we can get a bit more in there. Come on. That's it. That's it. That should do it. And we'll just tilt it a bit that way just to make sure that we really do get the best sort of filling. Let me just prop something under there. Yeah. There we go. Right, and there we have it. So, they're poured in. 
Yeah, this is poured in. This is a, looks a lot wetter than this one, and the reason for that is as the plaster has dropped down, it's forced that water that was previously in here to the top because the plaster is heavier. Yeah, now that's what we want because the water is purely there to carry the plaster into all the nooks and crannies. So, the, th the science is we won't get any what you call it, air bubbles with this one we will with this one but to be truthful we're probably going to get them with this one as well they just won't be as bad yeah you can use vibration units yeah which are like little vibration tables yeah to sort of shake out the air bubbles yeah with casting powder this thick it's it's a bit iffy to be truthful yeah so that's important we need to come back when they've sort of cured a bit so I'll see you shortly guys Right, we're about 15 minutes in, and all the heat has sort of gone out of these now. Uh, Herculite too, it sort of cooks up with an exothermic reaction, which means it gets warm. So as they're curing, yeah, you can feel them, they're literally warm. Once they start to cool down, you know they're ready to pop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our, our professional one first, yeah? And it's just a matter of picking it up, peeling back the air. Oh, yeah, told you that was going to be thin. It's not a problem, though. And I'll explain why it's not a problem in a minute. Just let me pop that out. So that one is for that. Yeah, and then pop this one. Come on, baby. Pop you out. Go on, pop. Pop. Don't you. Yes. There we go. Right. So straight off, here they are. If I bring them right up to the camera. Yeah. Lovely casts, we've got no air bubbles, I mean even with the deep troughs as you can see it's carried in really well into there, yeah and we've got no air bubbles whatsoever. Now like I say it did break when it came out, yeah that's not a problem because we're going to be using lots of little bits anyway so I break them anyway. Yeah now as you can see there's a little bit of flash on the sides, yeah so just come along, yeah and just run your finger around the edges, yeah just smooth off all the flash so that's one done. I'll put it down there, very professional like. Yeah, and then this one. Yeah, perfect. So I'll throw those there. Right, our other mold now. This is our quick and dirty one. So if we lift this out and pop this one first. Yeah. And if I pick it up, you can see. Yeah. There's a couple of tiny sort of air bubbles here and there. Yeah. And then obviously we've got the flash, so break the flash off. Now, tiny, tiny air bubbles aren't a problem because by the time we've put a coat of emulsion on and sealed them and all those sort of things, they'll disappear. It's the big ones that are the problem. So, hopefully we'll have some big ones in this one. Yeah. So, come on, out you come, baby. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, that's our piece. Those are the other bits I was using. Right, so, let's have a look at this one. Yeah, we've got some there. Yeah, so, if I bring it right up close... You can see there's an air bubble there, there's another one there. Now, before it's completely cured, yeah, what you can do is just come along with your nail and break it. You see, the thing with air bubbles is the reason why they're so noticeable is because they're round and they're perfectly smooth, yeah. But while the plaster's still soft, if you come along with just your nail, yeah, any air bubbles. You can make completely disappear anyway. Yeah, so they're gone. So with regards to the techniques, yes, you can use the sort of wet water technique. This will need dipping again, yeah, and then it's ready to go. Or you can just keep them going dry, because if you're going to be doing large pieces, yeah, you can always come along on any large air bubbles. You can just clean out with your nail as you go. The small ones, they're going to get filled. It's as simple as that. Yeah, so that's our pieces popped. The next thing we need to do, yeah, is to sort of just let them cure, and when they cure, they'll end up like this. And if I give you, if I pick these two pieces up, do you hear that? They're still very wet. I pick these two pieces up, yeah, they're a lot lighter, okay. You can throw these in the oven to be truthful, yeah, after you've done like a, you know, don't cook them in the oven, but after an oven after you've actually been cooking. Yeah, just put them all on a tray and stick them in there, and that'll take it out. You can also get things like food dehydrators, which are good for doing Hearst Arts blocks and small stuff, but, you know, you're going to struggle with any real volume. To be perfectly honest, i just leave them on the kitchen side for a day or two. Yeah, let me just clean the, these edges up, just in case we've got any flash. 
Mm. Don't be scared of breaking bits on these, by the way, because you remember they're going to be fitted onto a hillside. Yeah? Right, so I think that about covers it, doesn't it? Right, that's casting the rocks up. The next bit we've got to sort of look at is actually doing the hillsides. Yeah. Okay, guys, so that's how I cast up my rock faces using Herculite 2 and Woodland Scenic Rock Moulds. Now, obviously, there's lots of other rock moulds out there. You can also make your own using uh, latex. Yeah, so we'll be covering that in a future video. Yeah, I'm just working on it as we speak. Now, the second part of this video, yeah, is I'm going to need to go to the actual studio to do that. And I want to do the full piece and have it finished so you can see the finished effect. So, you're probably going to see that one in probably about a month's time. But, as you're watching the D-Day project log, if you, you know, when you ask, what are you casting them? How are you casting them? Yeah, because you're going to see it sort of progress on that through, the, through it anyway. Yeah, this bit's done and this tutorial's done. So, covered it. Right, so like I say, part two... Coming up, once we've actually got all these clad onto the board, I've got all the tips together, and they're all painted up, and I can show you something actually really impressive with it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than, this is just how you stick it on. Yeah, so that's my thinking. Right, guys, in the meantime, yeah, we've got more tree tutorials coming, yeah, because I want to finish that little series off. Uh, we've got the wire armature coming, uh, yeah, the castle rock, yeah, we're doing some stuff with some hot wire foam factory tools while we're carving as well. <laughs> Loads doing. In the mean, so, I don't know what you'll see next, whether a tree or a board update, but you're going to see something cool. So, like it if you like it. If you've got any experience, any questions, yeah, throw them in the comments, you know, give it a share. And as always, guys, if you like this sort of stuff, you like these tutorials and they're helping you with your hobby, please consider checking out Patreon. Yeah, one dollar a month, just one dollar makes a massive difference because it all pulls together and gives me the resources, the time, the camera kit to make these things for you. So there you are, yeah? And if you don't, don't worry because we're going to carry on regardless as we always do. So, I will be back soon with either a tree, a D-Day board or maybe some rocks. And, ooh, I don't know. What's coming next? Yeah. <laughs> One of those. I'll see you soon, guys. All the best, yeah? Turn up. <laughs> proper professional, folks. Proper professional.